Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno and welcome back to my OpenGL series. So last time we talked about textures and specifically we got the Cherno logo rendering onto a quad essentially on our screen. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely click up there and watch it. It's gonna be important for today because at the very end of that episode last time, we had a bit of an issue with how our texture was actually rendering. And then instead of leaving you guys with a cliffhanger, which I was very tempted to actually do, but didn't. So uh, yeah, that was nice of me, right? We actually talked a little bit about blending and specifically we enabled something called blending and we set a blend function and that got our texture rendering normally. So if we take a look at the code, specifically we added these two lines. If I comment them out and run my program, we will get a weird looking texture. So there's our texture, looks pretty weird. If I go back to my code and I just enable this first line, which is just enabling blending in the first place, it looks, well, exactly the same. And if I enable both of these lines, then we get something that looks a little bit more normal or something that we would expect, which is, well, this, which is really resembling the source image that we actually used as a texture in this case. So I quickly added those two lines and I didn't really explain them because I wanted to save them for this video, which is going to be explaining what blending actually is. And I've even done something a little bit different today which I hope you'll enjoy in the rest of this video. Okay, so blending, what is it? And why was our texture rendering incorrectly in the first place? So blending is pretty simple. It's essentially when we render something that is partially or fully transparent, how do we do that, right? If I have something with a concept of transparency, first of all, you have to realize that to you and me, when, when we talk about transparency and we think of something maybe like in Photoshop, when you, when you turn down the opacity of a layer or you have something like glass that you're rendering that is like kind of there, but not really mostly made up of reflections perhaps, or maybe it's colored glass. So it kind of tints the view a certain color. It all kind of makes sense to us in our brain. And we're like, yeah, that, that's what I expect to happen, right? But when we're talking about graphics programming, you have to tell the computer what you actually want it to do because it doesn't know what you want to do. And by default, OpenGL doesn't perform any kind of blending. It just kind of takes whatever you're rendering and just renders it as if it was just something opaque or something normal or something well, normal to it, right? So just keep in mind that when we talk about all of these kind of concepts, what you expect is not necessarily what the computer expects and you may have different definitions. So that's why we're gonna go back to basics and I've even prepared a bit of a PowerPoint presentation, which is something that I don't think I've ever done before. Um, so let me know what you think of this kind of style because I really wanted to kind of have some diagrams and explain what blending actually was. So what is blending? So suppose that we had this red square that we rendered and on top of it in some form, we rendered a blue square. Now this blue square in this example is going to be partially translucent, right? It's not going to be a fully opaque blue square because if we just rendered that on top of our red square, well, we wouldn't see the red square at all. We would just get a blue square. However, in this example, pretend that this blue square is really like a sheet of blue glass or something like that. We would expect to get a combination of those two colors, which we would perceive as purple, right? If we literally in real life took red glass and blue glass and then put them on top of each other like this, we would see light coming through would actually be tinted purple. And that's what we would perceive with our eyes. More specifically, if we actually look at what this looks like, if we rendered a red square and then a blue square on top of it, but the blue square was in fact translucent, we would see something like this, which is the combination of those two colors. So blending just determines how we actually combine our output color with what is already in our target buffer. So what is our output color? That's the color that we output from our fragment shader known as the source. So in this case, we're outputting a blue color because we're rendering a blue square. And then the target buffer is where we're actually drawing that, that blue square onto. So in this case, we're drawing it onto an already existing buffer known as our destination, which in this case contains a red square. So how do we actually control the way that these two colors get blended? Well, we really have three different ways in OpenGL and they do very different things. So first of all, enable and disable. GL enable and disable blend enables and disables blending in the first place. If you don't have blending enabled, which you won't by default, then nothing is going to happen. You're, it's just not gonna blend at all. So the first thing you need to do, which is also the first thing that we did in our code, was GL enable, GL blend. Secondly, we have something called a blend function which takes a source and a destination. And this function that we call basically specifies how we actually blend the two colors together. So the source is how the source RGBA factor is computed. By default, this is GL1. 
destination is how the destination RGBA factor is computed. By default, this is zero. So this is going to be all a lot clearer when I actually dive into examples in a minute. But when I talk about the source RGBA factor, essentially what this blend function determines is what we do when we perform our blending equation is we take each color channel of the source RGBA and the destination RGBA, it doesn't have to be RGBA, it can just be RGB or whatever color format you're using. But every color channel, we take that actual value and we multiply it with something. And the something that we multiply it with is this RGBA factor that we specify. So when, when we say that the default is GL1, that means we literally take our source RGBA channels all separately and we multiply them with one. Now anything multiplied with one, X multiplied by one is gonna be X, right? So in other words, whatever the source is, that does not change. The destination, however, we know that we, by default, it's set to zero. And anything multiplied with zero is zero. So what this is basically saying, this default GL blend function, is throw away the destination and just override it with the source, right? Because everything in the source gets multiplied with one, which means it doesn't change. And everything in the, in the destination gets multiplied with zero, which means that it just gets nuked, right? It becomes zero. So we have those two separate things, right? The source is just unchanged and the destination has been set to zero. And now we need to do something with these two components that we have. And that's where this third thing comes in, which is called our blending equation. So the mode basically just specifies as the one parameter that, that this function takes, specifies how we combine the source and destination colors. By default, it's add. So we have those two colors, as I said, we have the source and the destination. We need to do something with those two components. We add them together. By add, it just means plus. Right, so you take whatever the source color is, which was the source color multiplied with one, so just the source color, and then you add to it the destination color multiplied by zero, which is zero. So we take source and we add zero to it, which equals source. So in this example, by default, we get something that's essentially one plus zero, which is just one, right? Which just means use the source value. Now this does not mean the source alpha value. I literally mean all of the color channels. Just take whatever the source is and overwrite the destination with that source color. That is what happens in OpenGL by default if you don't set a blend function. However, what we did is we used something. We actually set a blend function and specifically we used the source being GL source alpha and destination being GL1 minus source alpha, which is what got us that result that looked like something that we would expect. So to show a simple example using these source and destination function values that we actually set here, if the pixel that we're rendering from our texture is completely transparent, right? So what I mean by that is the alpha is set to zero. It's completely transparent. Our source alpha is zero. Our destination is one minus the source alpha. So you can see over here, we've set our source to be GL source alpha, which means use whatever the source alpha value is. Since it's transparent, it's zero. The destination says, take the inverse of that source alpha. So we look at the source alpha, which is zero, and we do one minus the source alpha. So in other words, one minus zero, since our source alpha is zero, equals one. So we have those two values. And now what do we do with them? Well, if we look at the actual equation behind this, it essentially just means use the destination color, the color's already in the buffer, because alpha zero means it's transparent, which means we don't see it. So we shouldn't really be writing a pixel at all. Just use whatever value is behind that pixel in that destination buffer. If we actually look at the maths behind this, you can see that for each channel, let's just pretend we have an RGBA text or an RGBA buffer. We take the source red channel, we multiply it by the source alpha, which is zero. And then we add to it the destination red channel multiplied by the inverse of that. So multiplied by one in this case. And of course, zero plus whatever the destination value is, gives us the destination value. And we do that for every single color channel. So you can see that this maths kind of works out so that we just don't use any of the source color at all. We just keep the destination color in the actual buffer. We don't affect the buffer at all. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example because that was really simple. So pretend that our pixel is partially transparent here. Let's just say that we've got this kind of white square that is translucent, right? It's got an RGB of 111, but the alpha is 0 0.5. So here it is, we've got a white square. It's white, but it's translucent. And then in our destination buffer, we've just got this kind of destination buffer, which we've just cleared to magenta. So 101, and we'll say the alpha is one as well. Here it is. Okay, so using our current blending settings of source alpha and one minus source alpha, let's take a look at the math. So the red channel is one, right? Because the source red channel is one over here. It's our white square. We multiply that with the source alpha, which is 0.5. 
And then to that, we add the destination red channel, which is one, multiplied by the inverse of that source alpha, one minus source alpha, which is 0 0.5. And then that works out to be 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5, which is just one. So in other words, we're rendering one. Now this is gonna be the case for a lot of these channels because you can see that we're literally rendering ones everywhere, not like 0.7 or something. We're literally at the kind of peak of our non-HDR color range. So the green channel is also going to be a little bit like this, but you can see that our green channel for our destination is just zero. However, since the green channel for our source is one, we basically blend that together and made it halfway and it gives us 0 0.5. Blue channel is gonna be identical. Alpha channel changes a little bit because we're combining 0 0.5 and one. Halfway between that, we get 0 0.75. So if we were to render this white square on top of this magenta rectangle, we would get something that looks like that. If I just take these color values and I rendered them, that's what I get. And that's kind of what you would expect if you had a white square, like a white sheet of glass or something, I don't know, that was partially transparent like this. Okay, so that's how blending works. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. It is actually quite simple once you understand how it works. Do a few of these examples that I've done at home. Try some different functions, try some different equations. Just do it on paper and see what you get. Learning these things is really important because using blending is something that you'll be using for a while in graphics programming in general. And I know that the hardest thing is always being like, well, what's source alpha? What's one minus source alpha? I'm just told to set that as my blend function and leave it as that. But how does it actually work? Well, this is how it works. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, you can hit the like button. You can also help support this series by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. Huge thank you as always to all the people who are supporting this series. It would not be here without those people. So huge thank you. Everyone should be thanking them really if you are enjoying this series. Hope you enjoyed this little PowerPoint presentation style. I actually quite liked it because instead of me waving my hands around all day and actually trying to draw things and try and visualize this or attempting to actually draw stuff live, I can just kind of, you know, make these cute little diagrams and fade in animations and I, I don't know. I mean, I personally think it's a really cool idea. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Next time we're going to continue on with our render and all that cool stuff. Now that we have blending working, that's very important and we can actually start rendering textures properly. Until then, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.